The film begins with Sophie, a blind teenager, packing her suitcase. She slowly makes her way down the stairs to the front door, trying not to make any noise, when her mother finds out and asks her where she is going. Sophie tells her that she got a gig, but her mother is concerned that she is earning through the wrong means and asks her about the money that was deposited in her account. She informs her mother that she house sits for rich people and was going to call her from the road. They both hug before Sophie rides off in a cab. Sophie was a downhill skier who dreamt of becoming an Olympic athlete, but her dreams were dashed when she was diagnosed with a degenerative eye disease causing blindness. She reaches a remote house in the mountains. Deborah, the house owner, welcomes her and informs her about cat sitting. Deborah is thankful to Sophie for answering a last-minute ad for a sitter. She informs her that she wants to have some time away after her recent divorce. Deborah tries to show Sophie where everything is, but Sophie says that she'll find them on her own. Deborah leaves after telling Sophie where everything is. Sophie puts a monitor on the cat's neck and video calls her friend, Cam. It turns out that he helps Sophie to steal expensive goods to resell for extra money. Cam instructs her around the house, describing everything to her, and they finally reach the wine cellar. Sophie picks up one bottle and asks Cam to look up the price. Cam tells her that she should put it back, and he can't keep doing it, but Sophie assures him it's all on her. Cam reminds her that she'd need him for reselling, and it makes him guilty as well. So he gives her an ultimatum that he'd be done with her if she takes the wine. They argue about the time when Cam offered to help her train for the Paralympics by working as her seeing guide, but Sophie refused. Cam accuses her that she has enough guts to steal, but not to be guided by him. She decides to put the wine back, but her connection cuts off. Later, she is seen listening to her emails through the voice assistant and finds her mother's mail that is about an app called See For Me, which allows blind people to connect with a sighted helper in a live video call. She deletes all the emails and walks out as Deborah calls her and asks Sophie to activate the security system while on call. Later, she walks out of the house to relax, but the door gets locked. She thinks of calling Cam, but stops and decides to download the See For Me app through the voice assistant and gets connected to a gamer named Kelly who resides in Florida. Kelly doesn't treat Sophie with pity, and after a lot of struggle, she finally manages to get her inside through an unlocked door on the ground floor. Sophie ends the call after thanking Kelly, saving her as the priority. At night, a car silently pulls outside and two men named Dave and Ernie break into the house without realizing that there is someone inside. Sophie gets awakened by the sound and goes out to see if it's the cat. Ernie removes the television to remove the wall behind it. Sophie turns the cat monitor on and it begins to beep while she follows the sound. Ernie also hears the sound and begins to follow it. He finds the cat and realizes that they are not alone. Sophie is about to enter the room when Dave makes a sound while opening a hidden safe, alarming Sophie. Ernie tells him to be silent, informing him that there is someone in the house and they need to continue the plan while taking care of the person. Sophie hears this and gets out of there. She calls 911, but the dispatcher informs her that it would take time for them to reach the remote location. She asks her to stay on the line, but Sophie disconnects and calls Cam. He doesn't answer, so she calls Kelly again and informs her about the intruder. Kelly tells her to hide somewhere, but Sophie says that they know she is in the house and will track her down, so she needs to get out of there. Kelly sees Dave drilling and tries to instruct Sophie on the way out while Ernie keeps looking for her. Kelly asks Sophie to stay hidden from them, but Sophie, being her stubborn self, says that she knows where the front door is and sprints for it despite Kelly's protests. She stops hearing the men talk. Ernie calls the boss, Rico, and informs him about the situation, and they get ordered to continue drilling while looking for the person. Kelly asks Sophie to stay where she is, but she adamantly gets out of the house where Kelly notices another man, Otis, and asks Sophie to stop, but she gets caught and the video call is disconnected. Otis drags her inside and they find out that she had called the cops. They inform Rico and he asks Sophie what she is doing there. She informs them that she is cat sitting. She asks them to take whatever they want and she'll not say anything. They are running out of time as the cops will soon get there. Otis remarks that she has seen their faces, so they should kill her now, but Sophie discloses that she is blind. They take her identification. 
Rico looks up her name and confirms that she is blind. He instructs them to pack their things and leave without harming Sophie as she is useless. While they are arguing about the situation, Sophie learns that they have come for $7 million hidden in the safe. She offers to help them get rid of the cops in exchange for 5% of the robbed money. They don't trust her and she asks them to look in her bag where they find the bottle of wine. She informs them that she was going to resell it, making them believe that she is just as greedy as them. They continue their plan and Sophie calls the police saying that she made a mistake. But the dispatcher tells her that they would still require a checkup on the situation so an officer will soon be arriving at the house. Rico asks Sophie if she can lie to the officer and Sophie confidently affirms. Meanwhile, Kelly is worried about Sophie and has informed 911 about the home invasion and the number of intruders that she has witnessed. Soon, Deputy Brooke arrives at the house and Sophie has to let her in. She says that it was just a mistake, and the deputy tells her she would just check the house and leave. Just when the officer is about to leave again, she gets informed on her radio that a woman in Florida was on a video call with the girl and saw three male intruders in the house. This confirms Sophie's lie, and Brooke gets back inside asking where they are. Ernie surrenders while Brooke asks for backup on the radio. She restrains him and continues asking Sophie where the others are. Sophie tells her that there are two more, but she doesn't know where they are. Otis then attacks the officer. A struggle ensues among them and ends in the unfortunate murder of the deputy while Sophie escapes with her gun. Ernie says that they only have 20 minutes before the backup arrives, so they need to get the work done faster. Sophie calls Kelly again and gets out of the house while Otis begins looking for her. Kelly instructs her to get inside through the same door from before. Sophie falls, alerting Ernie. He follows the sound with a knife while Dave continues to drill. She hears someone getting closer and hides, turning off the flashlight. Kelly asks Sophie to feel the knob in the gun and confirms that the safety is off. Sophie hears Ernie entering the room while Kelly watches through the video call. When he is close enough, Kelly instructs Sophie to fire. Sophie hesitates but manages to shoot him before he could attack her with the knife. Otis hears the sound and follows it. Sophie's battery is down and Kelly instructs her to get the charger upstairs. Otis is amused to see Ernie down and begins looking for her. They soon come across each other and Sophie shoots him. Just then, the connection gets weak while Sophie randomly shoots around. Otis limps closer as Sophie gets inside the cellar. He begins attacking the door with an axe and the connection finally gets better. Before he could get Sophie, Kelly instructs her to fire, this time killing him. Kelly asks her to take the radio from him and tries to calm her down. The phone is about to die while Kelly informs her to stay alert as there is only one man left and the police will be arriving soon. Sophie also learns that Kelly is an army veteran. Sophie confesses to agreeing with the robbers and feels guilty about the deputy's murder. Meanwhile, Dave finishes drilling and removes the headphone. He calls out, but gets no answer. Sophie doesn't want to hide and asks Kelly to instruct her to shoot Dave as she only has 5% battery remaining. He is trying to open the safe when Sophie creeps up behind him. With Kelly's help, she shoots the man, but misses. He begs her to let him go while Kelly orders her to shoot as the battery is about to die. Sophie is contemplating when her phone finally dies. He tells her that he is taking his share and tries to leave, but Sophie asks him to stop. He tries to take the taser from the cop and gets shot by her. Rico calls and Sophie picks up, informing him that it's done. She is about to take some money from the safe, but hides hearing Rico enter the house. He turns out to be Deborah's ex-husband who wanted his money back, and Deborah doesn't even know it exists. He is impressed by Sophie and asks her to come out to take her some. He calls the cops, pretending to be a victim, and then tries to convince Sophie to partner up. Sophie cuts the lights off, baiting Rico to pursue her. After looking all around the house, he finds Sophie and begins shooting. She gets shot, but stays hidden. She finds one of the guy's phones and redials Rico's number. Just as the phone rings, she begins shooting before running out of ammunition. A long silence follows, and she thinks that she has killed him and begins walking out. Rico creeps up to her and begins strangling her. Sophie manages to get a hold of a wine bottle and smashes it at him over and over again. 
She lies down on the floor and hears the sirens get closer. While recovering in the hospital, Sophie tells her mom that she is going to try out for the Paralympics. Her mom is worried about the money they'll need to cover her training costs. Sophie just smiles and clutches her backpack. Later, we see Sophie on the snowy hill training with Cam. She calls Kelly and asks her to enjoy the ride through the video call. And they begin skiing down the hill. What do you think about this movie? Who do you think the good guy and the bad guy were? Leave a comment down below. If you want to watch more on Movie Shortens, click on our next videos and playlists on the screen. Thanks for watching.